Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another 807th Flight School. And in this time, we're going to talk a little bit about more advanced strategies and tactics, specifically ammo types and their use, and why you might think that one ammo is better than another and then it wind up not being better than another and also being able to utilize that ammo in a way that's going to be best beneficial to you. Okay, now in War Thunder you're going to see that there are a ton of different ammo types. When you go to unlock your weapon, right, and you unlock let's say a 50 cal and you go through the modification and you actually unlock it and you unlock the uh, uh, various ammo belt types. Uh, you're going to have belt types like stealth, tracer, omnipurpose, ground, air, things like that, right? So when you unlock those, when, if you click on them, you'll see that they contain a certain number of bullets per belt, okay, per strip. Um, and like if some will have three, like it might have a tracer, an armor piercing, and an incendiary round. And then the next one might have a tracer, an armor piercing, another armor piercing, and an incendiary round. So what they're saying is the first one, every three rounds, it will repeat itself. It'll go tracer API, tracer API, tracer API, and that's how it fires. Where the second example would be tracer AP, API, tracer AP, API, and so forth. So when you look at your ammo, you gotta understand that just because it says it has AP, it might not have as many AP as you would like. Or just because it says it has incendiary rounds doesn't mean that all of them are incendiary rounds. So take a look at the different ammo composition of your belts. Okay, now when you look at your ammo composition, for for simplicity's sake, or for space sake, I should say, Gaijin has put, in War Thunder, has put uh, the ammo as coded letters so that you so that you can see what the strip would contain. And those coded letter letters are sometimes confusing to people. That's partially why I'm making this video for the 807th squadron is so that you can understand and identify the ammo types. Okay, let's start off with there's machine gun ammo. There's machine gun ammo and then there's uh, cannon ammo and there's sometimes different types of ammunition are available to cannons that are not available to the machine guns. Uh, but the main ammo types and being the 807th, being an American slash British squadron, we will have a certain type of ammo that other nations might not have. Also, they might have ammo types that we are not going to have. So, and I'll kind of glaze over those towards the end. Okay, let's talk about machine gun ammo. The first thing you're going to see is practice ammo, or P, P for practice. Practice ammo is, think of it as ball ammo. Uh, you'll also see ball, but uh, practice and ball is, okay, practice is kind of like a plastic or rubber bullet in reality, but in War Thunder, I think it's maybe just a lead bullet, and it's just, it's just a lead bullet, and so then you got ball ammo. A ball is a, a lead bullet, but it's cased with a brass case. So when you fire it, uh, it's still a soft bullet. Brass is not as not a very it's not a very hard metal. So when if it hits anything hardened like armor, it's just going to squash against it. Okay, we'll get into that in a minute. Okay. Then there's tracer ammo. Tracer ammo is just that. It's T. I'm sorry. T equals tracer ammo, which is ammo that you can see. Okay, we'll get into that in a minute. I. I is incendiary ammo, and incendiary ammo basically is used to set fire to things, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then armor piercing, uh, or AP. AP ammo, uh, it's not two different ammos, it's not an A and a P, it's 
AP, which is armor piercing, which is a which is mainly a lead bullet with either a steel casing or a steel core. If it has a steel core, uh, it will have different properties than one that has a steel case. Obviously, obviously. Okay. And then the last one is API, which is armor piercing, incendiary. So it has qualities of both armor piercing and incendiary. Okay, so now let's talk about the cannons. The cannons ammo. Okay, you have cannon ammo has practice, obviously. You have practice, which I have no idea what a cannon's practice ammo would be. You know, uh, a baseball? I don't know. 20 millimeters is pretty big. That's a golf ball size bullet, you know. And then you got, uh, let's see, uh, Americans. Heffy. You have something called Heffy, uh, which is H E F dash I, which is high explosive fragmentation and also incendiary. So it's high explosive fragmentation is the bullet, but it also has an incendiary, incendiary charge. Then you have APT, or AP-T. It's armor piercing, but it also has tracer. Then there's one, it's kind of weird. It's called Hef Sappy, okay? Or H-E-F-S-A-P-I. You already know what HEF is, that's high explosive fragmentation. But then there's SAPI, which is semi armor piercing incendiary. Okay. <laughs> and then there are some rounds that other nations' cannons have, like APIT, which is armor piercing incendiary with tracer abilities. Then there's IT, which is an incendiary tracer. Then there's APHE, one of my favorites, but unfortunately not American. It's the armor piercing HE. And then you have HEI, which is high explosive incendiary. And then one of the last ones is FIT, fragmentation incendiary tracer. <laughs> okay, so I can see where if you're not fluently with each of these ammo types, they could be overwhelming and it could be confusing. Okay, and uh, I definitely understand that. So what I have is a diagram here to kind of show you the basics of bullet construction. Okay, now in this picture right here, you see the ball ammo is on the left, then you see armor piercing, you see tracer, you see explosive, and you see incendiary. Okay, now when you're talking about it in War Thunder, some of these rounds are going to have combinations or like uh, they'll have capabilities of both. But remember, when you combine capabilities from one bullet type to another, let's say armor piercing tracer, it will not be as armor piercing as a normal armor piercing round. And it has tracer abilities. So by, by putting the tracer composition into the armor piercing bullet, you're losing its armor piercing capabilities. Okay, so let's let's go over each of these rounds and what the differences are. Okay, your ball ammo, right? The first one on the left. That, as you can see, it's primarily a lead bullet, maybe with a little aluminum at the front. Uh, the the picture is actually of the 303 or the 7.7 .7 millimeter British rounds, but this applies to all bullets, all ammunition types. Uh, cannon or machine gun. Uh, you got you're gonna have your lead, maybe aluminum or brass case around it. When it strikes the target, it's going to immediately squash out, and because the lead has a lot of weight to it, it will actually do more damage. Okay, so if you think of it like it'll, uh, as long as the target's not armored, it will, and as long as it's not so unarmored, like a World War I biplane, it would just fly right through the canvas. But if it was uh, has any kind of metal composition on the body, when it hits that metal, the lead will flatten out into a squash. And then when it penetrates the metal, it's actually doing more damage than seven millimeters worth of damage. It's doing about uh, double that, approximately. So 
so it's really good at doing damage to non-armored targets. Uh, and it's pr primarily what is being used by most uh, ground troops in their rifles. So most most bullets that you fire at the enemy are is ball ammo uh, because most people are not armored. And when it hits that when it hits that person, it uh, squashes out and tears up more flesh than what the bullet would normally do. Uh, sometimes if it is uh, if it is cased in uh, brass or steel or anything like that, it'll just penetrate straight through the person, not causing a whole lot of damage. Okay, so back to the airplanes. Uh, as you know, I'm going to jump off tr track just a little bit here, just to, uh, this might help me explain the different ammo types. Force. Force is what you're trying to in, uh, assert onto your opponent's airplane. Force is measured with a formula called mass times velocity squared. That's how you get your force. Okay, but because of all these bullets of the same, like when you're firing a 50 cal, all the 50 cal bullets are going to be pretty much traveling at the same speed. That's not exactly true, but for the purposes of this explanation, we're just going to assume they're traveling all pretty close to the same speed. So the velocity squared portion of that formula, you can just throw it out. So the only thing you need to even concentrate on, the only the only part of that formula that you need to worry about is mass. How much mass are you putting onto your opponent's plane uh, causing damage, right? Because the force that you're asserting onto their plane is what's causing damage. Okay, so a lead bullet is going to have a lot of mass as opposed to, let's say, a tracer bullet. And the reason why that is, is uh, looking at the diagram, you see the first quarter of the, of the bullet is made out of lead. So that's no problem. That's the same. It has like a copper jacket around the tracer composition. And the tracer composition is a, it's a material that once the bullet is fired, will actually burn. I think it's phosphorus. Will burn. And so it'll burn different colors. So uh, depending on the chemical uh, you know, the way they mix it, it's going to be either like blue or red or green or, you know, and different different nations use different colored tracers to help identify like what's going on. Like, like you're going to see nothing but green tracers up until you're real close to your belt emptying. Then you might start to see red tracers kind of as a warning that you're about to run out of ammo. That's historical. Okay, so when you fire the gun, bang, right? The bullet flies out, the tracer composition ignites and starts burning. So by the time it reaches the target, let's say 500 meters away, all of that tracer composition has burnt out. So you all you have is a very tiny little bullet at the very beginning, that lead quarter, the point of the bullet is lead, and that's what's making the impact. So it's doing about one-fourth the damage that a ball bullet would be doing, okay? But the advantage is you did get to see where your bullet was traveling. So if you're not a good shot, use tracer. You can see where your bullets are flying because they burn. It will burn out. They will, the bullets will continue to fly. You just won't see where they're going after a certain amount. I don't know what that distance is in this game, but we're going to say around 500 meters. So you fire the bullet. 500 meters later, you stop to see the you stop seeing the tracers fly, but the bullets are still traveling out there and they're still hitting something. Not doing a lot of damage because there's not a lot of lead behind them. Okay. So now let's go to armor piercing. Armor piercing has no tracer composition. It does have a little bit of lead, but primarily on the center core of the bullet like a like a sabo round is a steel shank, basically a steel piece of metal in the hardened steel, so that when you fire it, nothing falls off the bullet, nothing, the, the lead retains its mass, transmits that mass because of the weight, energy, into the steel as it's flying, so when the bullet hits the target, the lead portion of it 
will squash, but if it doesn't penetrate, which squash heads usually don't penetrate, when it doesn't penetrate, that steel will continue to penetrate and retain the damage capability that the lead transferred into it. Now, it did, will not lose any mass because there's no tracer or incendiary or explosive uh, type composition inside the bullet, so it retains all of its ability to penetrate. But it also retains all of its mass, so it will do full amount of damage. Okay, but the problem with AP is, first, you don't see where it's traveling, unless you know, you know, you've got good aim. And when it hits, because it doesn't scatter, or spread, fragment, or anything like that, it punches a, a hole, and that hole goes straight through. And so you're not seeing it tear up all kinds of components. It's just punching holes through things, which is good if you hit the person or a vital component like the engine or a fuel tank or um, a control surface. Yeah, it'll damage those pretty severely. Okay, the next one down. You have the incendiary round. An incendiary round is very similar to a tracer round. It's full of a burning composition, white phosphorus in this case. It does have a lead backing, so it will have some squash ability, but when it hits, it, it doesn't uh, penetrate very much. What it does is it squashes against the surface of the plane, and the incendiary cap will actually ignite the phosphorus. And so at that point, it becomes like it like a, a spark it, it it flashes really quick to burn flammable objects like wood paper cloth um, aluminum maybe a little bit aluminum can catch fire so but a really cool thing is if it's if there's no armor and it is able to penetrate the plane uh, it could catch fuel tanks on fire engine oil, people's clothing, you know, so incendiaries can start fires uh, in planes, but not very well against armored planes, because what it'll do is it'll just squash against the armor, and it will flash, and the armor will not burn. Okay, so then you go to the next one, which is explosive. Now, when we're talking about war thunder ammo, the only explosive rounds you see are the high explosive fragmentation rounds, and you also see the armor piercing high explosive, high explosive incendiary, and the high explosive sappy. But now, uh, each one of those have a very minor difference amongst them. Okay, let's talk about armor piercing high explosive, one of my favorites. It's a German round, I do believe. It has primarily a solid uh, steel shank in the front half of the round. And in the back half of the round, it's got a explosive shell, explosive composition. So it's not as heavy as a lead round, and it's it will not penetrate as well as an armor piercing round. But when it does penetrate, it flies into the plane and detonates so that the explosion happens inside the fuselage or inside the wing or inside the engine, inside the cockpit, causing massive damage. So it, the explosive happens inside. But now when you're talking about ex high explosive fragmentation rounds or high explosive fragmentation incendiary rounds, what those do is they strike the surface of the plane and explode immediately. So you're, and then they, they fragment into smaller pieces um, against an unarmored aircraft. That's pretty good because when it strikes the outside and it fragments, you get like a hundred little bullets, like a shotgun, just hit the outside of the plane. And so it does a, quite a bit of damage, but a, quite a bit of area damage, but it's all little bitty damages, if that makes sense. Like little pieces of fragmentations. Um, the problem with that is if you're striking an armored surface, or if it's at the wrong angle, when you hit it and it explodes, all those fragments 
don't penetrate, don't do anything. They just explode on the surface, and you see sparks. Uh, now, when it's it's even worse if it's a high explosive fragmentation incendiary round, because then what's happening is half of the shell is an incendiary composition, the other half is an explosive composition, so that when it does explode, then it's throwing white phosphorus everywhere, trying to get it to burn things. That's really good. It's super good against unarmored targets, but it sucks considerably against anything that's got armor. Okay, now I'm going to show you an example here of angle of attack. Okay, now just looking at this PBY, you can actually see uh, a zero degree angle of attack. Uh, zero degree is when you're like directly behind or directly in front or, you know, parallel with the surface that you're striking. So I say like when you're directly behind somebody and you're shooting them, you're not, not your bullets are not striking a flat surface. They're skipping off the wings, skipping off the tail, skipping off the fuselage. There's no real flat stopping surfaces. So everything is a ricochet from the rear. Okay, and then if you go 30 degrees out, and I, and I use these examples because War Thunder, when they provide you with their information about their bullets, they put it in 0, 30, and 60% values. They should give you also a 90% value because that is where you get your full penetration. But okay, so look at 0%. And that's what that's the value we're going to be working with earlier, and that we're later. And then 30% is a little bit angle out where you're behind or in front and you're off their axis, off their beam. You're, you're shooting at them like you're trick, like you're chasing them. This is probably the most common shot. You're never going to be perfectly behind somebody. Well, sometimes you are, but you're never going to be perfectly in front of them. Sometimes you are, especially on like direct head-on shots. Um, okay, and then there's 60, which means you're coming almost, you're almost completely to the side, and you're coming in on them, and and I would say that that is probably your best angle. It's not your most common angle, but it is probably the best angle to attack someone. And then 90 degrees. 90 degrees is when you're coming directly at their side. Um, I'm going to say that that is also a really good angle to attack somebody, but there's a, a, a higher chance that you will miss them uh, and not being able to lead them properly when you're coming at them from a 90 degree. So that's why I say somewhere between 30 and 60 is your probably your most optimal uh, firing angle. And the reason why is here's a di diagram of angle of attack and how much armor you have to penetrate. Okay, so if you're shooting at a zero degree slope, you're only having to go through a hundred millimeters. Let's say this is, I, this is a tank diagram, but understand that this would apply for airplane armor as well. It just wouldn't be a hundred millimeters. It's probably going to be closer to six to nine, something like that. So, if you hit it directly to the side, that's the left diagram, zero slope. You only have a hundred millimeters to go through. But if you hit it at twenty degrees, that one hundred armor just became 106 armor, which means it's a lot harder to penetrate. Plus, there is a slight chance that your bullet will automatically ricochet based on the tip of your bullet, how it's shaped. And if you go to 50 degree slope, you actually have to penetrate 155 millimeters. It more than increases your armor by half. So that's pretty substantial. And the chance of your bullet ricocheting, not penetrating at all, increases astronomically. Okay, so you always want to get a sharper angle when you're attacking. Okay, and you can only imagine if you were attacking someone from directly behind, trying to shoot down the length of the fuselage, it's just not going to do that much damage. It's not going to penetrate. So, you, okay, moving on. Next diagram kind of shows the same thing. Okay, it just shows at uh, like a 90 degree angle, it shows that a 30 millimeter armor 
turns into a 42 millimeter armor at 45 degrees. That's really all that's showing there on that, that angle there. Okay. Um, all right, now let's talk about uh, these ammo types for these planes right here. I'm, I'm basically showing you the American 20 millimeter cannon uh, on the Corsair, and uh, we're looking at the stealth ammo because stealth ammo uh, doesn't have a whole lot of armor penetrating. If you look, and I'm going to stay at 60 degree angle because that's where, hold on, uh, it shows that it's at 500 meters, and that's where most of your shots are going to be probably is around 500 meters. You're only getting six millimeter of penetration. So six millimeters of penetration is not a whole lot. Okay. So, and remember that's stealth ammo with a 20 millimeter cannon. All right. Now, if you, if you just take those 20 millimeter cannons off and you step back to 50 cals, it has, if you go back to the F4UA, the 50 cals using stealth ammo have eight millimeters of penetration. It actually penetrates more than the 20 millimeter because in stealth ammo, what are you using? You're using incendiary ammo, right? You're using ammo that doesn't have any tracers. No, uh, sometimes it's high explosive ammo. And when it's high explosive, remember, that doesn't penetrate armor. Okay, uh, high explosive armor piercing does. Okay, now, which is, which is odd when it comes to a different plane. Now that was the F4UA. Now if I jump into the P47, it should have the exact same 50 cal machine gun. So I'm thinking the ammo should be exactly the same, but it's not. Because at seven, at, at, at 500 meters with stealth, you're now penetrating less. You're penetrating seven millimeters, which me I think is odd. I think the ammo at the same range, same angle, same gun, should be penetrating the same, but but the belt compositions might be different. One might have more armor piercing than the other, and that's why it, they give you like a average penetration. Okay? All right. So if you look at a couple of different planes here, a lot of them have, what you know, about eight millimeters of armor, and it's all like right behind the pilot. So what that means is, if you're flying directly behind somebody and you're shooting them, you're not getting a pilot hit because you got to penetrate that armor. Also, you're penetrating the, the body of the plane, the fuselage, and all that, trying to get to the armor, which is then trying to get to the pilot. Um, not going to happen. But if you were at 30 or 60 degrees off beam, those bullets would bypass the armor and go straight to the pilot or any vital components of the plane, like the engine or the guns or the, anything like that. Okay, so so break, breaking it down as as the I'm going to try to break it down as the, the final piece of this, and this is this is kind of really the, the once you've got all the details behind us. Now this is where as being part of the 807th, uh, where this comes into play, and what I what I would like to see you pr start practicing and trying to do, or being aware of this when you go to select your armor. When you go to select your ammo types, look at the armor piercing capability of the ammo types. Take an ammo type that you're comfortable with that has more armor piercing ability. So usually that's going to be your ground target ammo, your uh, omnipurpose ammo. Uh, now what that's going to also do as a detractor and it and as a plus you're going to start to see tracer rounds so that means you're going to start to be able to see where your rounds are going if you're if you've been using stealth ammo in in arcade mode then you need to get away from that stealth ammo is good but it's not as good as armor piercing ground attack omnipurpose rounds the tracers will help you put your rounds on target. Also, the reason why I say that is because I don't want you to attack from directly behind. I do not want you to be 
exactly at zero degrees deflection behind someone when you're firing. Because they receive the best armor and you, you get the best chance of ricocheting your rounds when you're directly behind them. I want you to kind of maneuver a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right and shoot at them at an angle. Okay, so that you can bypass their armors. Your bullets will have a smaller chance of, of uh, ricocheting and it will actually penetrate. Uh, now, I understand that you want to use high explosive rounds. Be conscious that if you're flying against the Russians or other Americans, don't use high explosive rounds because most of your American planes and almost all of your Russian planes are armored. And so when you use high explosive, you're doing nothing. You're scratching the paint because you're hitting the surface of the plane and the rounds are exploding and not doing any damage. I hear a lot of complaints about how the Russians are overpowered or how uh, stellinium armor is just so thick. Well, it's because people are attacking them in the wrong way or they're using ammo that they're used to using in arcade mode that's not effective in a real fight. I've found that if you use armor piercing rounds, let me back that up. I found that if you use ground attack ammo, I know it's crazy, against Russian airplanes, it punches holes in them and they will go down. When you, uh, so, so when you launch your matches, when you see that you're fighting Japanese, whatever, use all the high explosive you want. When you see you're fighting British, use high explosive. Because guess what? You hit a British plane with any type of high explosive ammo, it blows up. You hit an American plane with ground attack or omnipurpose. You hit Russian with ground attack. All right, that's what I'm asking you guys to do. Practice it, try it, see if it works for you, see if it doesn't. You might be, you might love stealth ammo because you like sneaking up on people. And, and trying to shoot them without them knowing you're coming. But I'm telling you, if you're shooting a Russian with stealth ammo, he's going to know you're coming because all of his, all your bullets are going to be bouncing off his plane. And he's going to hear, tink, 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 tink. And he's going to know you're behind him. And he's still not going to be shot down. Just be aware of that. All right. Thanks for checking this out. I expect to see you in the air. Have fun.